It is well known that genetics plays a role in many diseases. You might have heard someone mention that obesity runs in their family. And if we look at the population, we indeed can observe clustering of certain diseases like obesity in families. Yet when we draw the family tree, we do not recognize Mendelian inheritance patterns. It seems that the genetic contribution of obesity is not linked to a single allele or a specific obesity gene, if you will. How does it work then? Traditionally, twin studies were used to study the genetic contribution for a disorder like obesity. The hypothesis was that if genetics plays a role, we would see differences in prevalence between monozygotic twins with nearly identical genomes and dizygotic twins with genomes that are less similar. Results of large twin studies confirmed this idea, as monozygotic twins were more often both obese than dizygotic twins, proving that there is a substantial genetic contribution in the risk of developing obesity. The contribution of genetics has been recognized in this manner for many disorders, like obesity, that typically don't show a Mendelian inheritance pattern, such as hypertension, celiac disease, asthma, or diabetes. Unlike Mendelian disorders, the genetic contribution consists of combinations of numerous weak genetic risk variants that affect multiple genes. Because there is no single cause of the disease, we call these diseases complex and polygenic. The presence or absence of one risk variant is thus not conclusive for developing a complex disorder. In fact, there is no set number or combination of disease-linked variants that will lead to a complex disorder. Therefore, when discussing complex disorders, we talk about genetic predisposition that increases or decreases your likelihood of becoming ill. Naturally, family members have more similar genomes and thus more overlapping risk variants, explaining why we observe the clustering of complex disorders in families. But genetics is only part of the equation. Environmental effects play a large role in complex diseases. Let's extend on the obesity example. Environmental risk factors that contribute to becoming obese are, for instance, unhealthy lifestyle habits, like not getting enough physical activity or consuming too many calories. Someone can have a large genetic predisposition of becoming obese. But by reducing the environmental effects, for instance, by living healthier, that person may avoid becoming obese at all. There is thus an interplay between the environment and genetics that together contribute to cause complex diseases. Each risk factor contributes slightly to getting the disease. While we do not exactly know to what extent that happens, we know that a certain threshold must be reached in order to get the complex disorder, like becoming obese. This threshold is reached through the accumulation of genetic and environmental factors. Imagine a tall glass that can be filled with marbles. They represent the risk factors, either being genetic or environmental. A full glass means that the threshold is reached and you will become ill. Someone can have a large genetic predisposition, filling the glass already considerably, leaving less room for environmental effects before the glass is full. This can be the case for families in which obesity runs in the family. Conversely, Someone with fewer genetic risk factors may be less susceptible to getting the same disease as the glass is more empty. How much genetics and environmental effects play a role 
is different for each disorder and is nearly impossible to quantify. The recurrence risks for complex disorders are therefore difficult to estimate. Researchers are trying to find methods to estimate the genetic contribution of risk variants to get an idea of the genetic predisposition for developing complex diseases. If those can be reliably predicted, someone might get an idea how much room there is for the environmental effects and make lifestyle changes accordingly.